Hey there YouTube world, it's Matt Schwartz, Welding Geek here, and on this episode of The Welding Geek, I'm going to be showing you how I'm going to go about making the pouches on Boba Fett's belt here. So I'm going to show you how I went about making that. I got three more to make, so if you want to see me put those together, stay tuned to the video. First things first, I figured I'd go over all the stuff that I'm going to be using to make these pouches. Um, as first, we're going to start off, you're going to need some leather here. I got this from buyonleather.com or something like that, and I bought a, a huge chunk, as you can see here, um, just because I like to buy in bulk. Uh, but I'll try to find some comparable stuff on Amazon, um, stuff that you, so you don't have to spend as much money as I did here on um on that so yeah we got my leather um, I also got some barge glue you'll need some of that um, you're gonna need a hammer uh, an exacto knife or something to cut the leather with so I'm gonna use box knife here with a new blade on it and a rotary cutter um, to cut the leather I also have a, a burnisher or whatever they call um, this is just to kind of work the leather a little bit um, I cut out a wood block to do the internal. I'm gonna, I'm gonna slide this wooden block inside the pouch when I got it glued and hammer time down on it just to break it down into the, to the, to the shape that I want it to be in. I've got a little bit of water here that I'm gonna soak it in when I do the whole hammering thing. Um, now, I'm going to use what's called a cobbler sewing machine that I got off of Amazon for like 100 bucks, but I understand that everybody um, is gonna go spend a hundred bucks just to make some pouches um, if you're just focusing on the pouches. So I got this If you're going to Do it by hand stitch by hand you can buy something like this Which is like a little fork thing and it comes in like a one fork two fork three four up to six or whatever and you just use these to Hammer and that punctures since we're barge gluing everything together everything will already be held together You just need to get stitches through it um, these are really handy to do that and you can do it, your saddle stitching, um, that kind of stuff and you can, anyway, I'm going to do it the easy way. I got my little cobbler sewing machine, which is awesome. I just wanted to show you guys this little tool that's used that and a hammer and you can put your stitches in that way if you don't want to spend the money on the cobbler sewing machine, which is totally understandable. Um, next up here, obviously I got the cutting mat, but you can cut your leather on however you want. And then I made some templates for these pouches that will be available on my Patreon page if you want to follow suit and make your own pouches. Um, I've got the main pouch and then a couple flaps here. So that's all the stuff that I'm going to need to use for making these pouches. So the next thing I'm going to do is we'll get our leather cut out and then we'll get gluing. You're also going to need some sandpaper. I had a chunk of sandpaper, but it must have knocked off the table or something. Um, but when we get ready to sand, I'll show you that. So yeah, I'm going to cut the stuff out. As you can see, I've got two different styles here. And that's because Boba Fett has two different styles. He's got this little tapered style and a rounded style. He's got one of these, three of these. So we got two more of these to make and one of these to make. So. I'm gonna get my leather over here in the cutting area. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and get my stuff cut out here. I'm not gonna actually trace this on here. This side of the this pouch doesn't matter because this is symmetrical. But when you do this one, you're gonna have to make sure that you make this is the top side, the shiny side, not the back side, the point. So make sure if you can use my templates that you actually have to either flip this over. Or if you're gonna do it on the back side and draw it on there and cut it out that way, um, then make sure you flip that over on the back side, otherwise it won't come out right. But I've glued mine onto some aluminum and sheared it out so I can cut right up against these, which makes it really handy. And I'm gonna try to use as much of this as possible. So I'm just going to kind of line these up and cut wherever I think is going to get the, 
the most amount of pouches out of this material as possible. So I'm going to start with my rotary cutter on my mat and cut this stuff out. All right, I got my first piece cut out. Now you'll see me with this cutting towards my hand. You probably shouldn't do that. I, I trust myself doing it. I've got steady hands. I've cut a lot of stuff. I have cut myself before um, and, and you will too if you do it. Um, so just be warned. You'll probably cut yourself if you cut towards your hand. Um, I just trust myself. <laughs> so anyway. So I'm going to go ahead and get all my other pieces cut out here. Um, you'll need one, one of these for a pouch and one of these for a pouch for each pouch. So I need to cut out uh, one more of these, one of those, and one of those. And those will be all my parts and pieces. And then we'll get the glue and stuff stuffed together. pieces cut out here you can see how those are opposites because they're gonna be layered on top of each other like so um, I got my round one cut out um, obviously I need we need to make sure that, that we glue this on correctly and then we'll get this matched up and we use some probably some sandpaper to radius off these edges a little nicer anyway the next thing we got to do is get out our barge glue here and I will show you how I go about gluing these up. Um, and hopefully all this will make sense as I get going here. So I'm gonna do that. So as you can see in our templates here, I've got these lines. Um, they're just there for reference. This will be the side of the pouch here. And then this is, we're gonna glue this part and this part. And then we will glue on our other flaps here basically that same amount across here and then we're going to glue this is more or less going to go like this um and then this will be or actually it'll be opposite like that and then this will be come around you can't see that it'll be glued together more or less like this and then we'll bring this over top and that down and that will be kind of how the pouch goes together here um that's gonna make a whole lot more sense here in a minute all right it is barge glue time i'm gonna go ahead and get my stuff glued up the way it should be you'll have your references on your templates here um these spaces right here are what you need to glue so i'm gonna glue that and that and that and that and that and then i'm gonna glue more or less from this line down on here. Um, so how barge glue works is you apply it and let it set for five minutes or so. And it, you do, do it to both sides and it's called a contact cement because after it dries and you actually put it together, it's not coming back apart. It's actually really good um, bonding, especially on leather, especially on a good roughed up surface on leather. It bonds really good. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and apply my barge you should probably wear gloves and a mask. I don't have those available right now, so I'm gonna go ahead and just glue this all up without it. Um, but this doesn't look like a big space. This is actually a pretty big, uh, well-ventilated room. Um, so this is not gonna stink me out too bad. Uh, it just be annoyance if I get it on my fingers though, but I don't have gloves, so I'm just gonna wing go without it. But I do recommend a mask and gloves if you don't have a well-ventilated space. Alright, so I got my barge glue on. I'm going to show you. Barge is a type of glue where you want the just the right amount, not way too much or not enough. I usually try to wet it out and um, have it pretty smooth. You don't want it glopped on there. Just enough to hit um, 
to make it wet looking, okay? Not a ton though. Um, and so we're gonna let these dry for like five minutes and then when we put them together, they're not gonna come back apart. Uh, barge is a great glue. Now if we will be doing some gluing on the finished side of this leather um, and you can tell that this is a pretty nice rough um, surface. So you definitely want that when using barge. If we just glued this and glued it to the same kind of surface, uh, it will stick kind of, but it'll be really easy just to go shh. But when you have uh, what's kind of like a, called a mechanical surface where you have this gritty, um, the fibers really almost bond together too. So you get a really good grip. So you want to have a nice mechanical surface when using barge. So we're gonna let this sit for a few minutes and then I will show you how to get them together to a certain point and then we're gonna have to glue um, some other sections here. So I'm gonna go ahead and let this stuff set up. All right, let's glue one of these bad boys up or at least get it this the right way here. Um, and yeah, I will show you how this goes together and then we'll glue the, the other side. Now when your, your contact cement is nice and dry, you just basically have to <laughs> press it down and it's stuck. Um, so I'm gonna kinda have this here, kinda show me how, kinda eyeball it, but. All right, so I got my first section there and I'm going to go ahead and take my little wooden block and press this down. I'm going to hammer that down. Get it really nice. And see once that is stuck, it is stuck. And then I'll fold this other section over here and bring this to meet it. You're going to try to meet these edges up nice and tidy like. Alright. slide my wooden block in here to get it to start. Getting that shape. And you can see how, how it's glued up together now. Kinda start with the one side and then Sorry, I can't start with this side and then roll it over and then that flop that side. Make sure you don't do it like this, but like this. And I got my little chunk of wood in here and I can kind of hammer on this a little bit, make sure that it's kind of setting. We don't quite need to do this quite yet. So the next thing, I'll get these other ones stuck together. We're gonna glue this uh, section here and then this folds up around here and we want to make sure that we mate these two sections up the two points nice and really really nice so we don't have to trim any more off if possible and if not then we'll but yeah so let's go ahead I'll get the barge to show you how I our barge glued this and then I'll get the other pouches kind of stuck together too here off camera so we're gonna glue Obviously this top section here on the rough side. Getting enough glue on it just to get it wet. Hitting the edges to make sure that the edges are nice and tight. Then we'll use our template here. And we really only want to glue this section there. So I'll kind of kind of mark it there-ish. 
and then we will come across like so. You want to only do it on this top section because we're going to use the in-between here as our belt loop. So you don't want to do the whole thing, just the top section. I really only want to mate these two pieces together to leave this little bottom section. that we'll put a stitch across to. And I'll show you what that looks like after we're done gluing. All right, next up we're going to uh, flop these bad boys over and get them glued up. <clears throat> Just like we did. Like I said, you wanna try to get these edges glued up as nicely as possible. Just for the sheer look, we can, might be able to come back in later. But you more or less, so here is, you can kind of start to see a shape, but you fold this over this way. Obviously glue these two pieces together. And try to get these edges nice and tight. And if they're not quite perfect, you could take them on the cutting board and cut the edges so they're nice and flat. And then we're gonna go ahead and go in, after we kinda use this wood board here and get these kinda shaped out a little better, and then get this folded over like so. We're gonna kinda work on this a little bit um, with the hammer and all that stuff, trying to get the shape. The shape. And then I'm gonna come in here and we're gonna stitch, the stitching around here, and then this will be the belt loop that goes around the belt, so. I'm going to go ahead and get my wood block in, and get this glued down a little tighter and then get my wood block in there and we'll start shaping it. I'm going to glue these other two real quick off camera. <sighs> All right, I got these kind of glued together. And now this is where that block of wood comes in handy. I'm going to go ahead and start kind of giving these a decent shape. Just kind of getting the leather, trying to get the leather to go where I want it to go without fighting me too much. It's gonna kinda beat on these edges a little bit, get some creasing going. Now that I got the wood kinda in there, hitting those, so you can really get this thing to fold over. And then we'll have our little belt pouch here and this will be stitched across here all the way across the top and around and we'll make a really nice a really nice pouch for us here um, yeah. and you can do this as much or as little as you want stitched up I'm gonna go ahead and dump dump them in the water and really kind of work them around with my hands too um, before I I'm actually gonna glue these shut because I want my pouches to look nice and tidy all the way around instead of doing a clasp um, if you want to do a clasp you can um, but yeah I'm really gonna get these worked around That's what the, the, the wood block comes in handy for. So I'm going to go ahead and do all the other pouches here. Hammer them up. And uh, yeah, you can see the difference. Hitting them with the wood block. Just kind of defines, defines everything nicely. This will fold over nicely. And we'll have a set of nice pouches from Boba Fett costume. So I'm gonna go ahead and hammer these other ones off camera and we'll do the next step. All right, it is time to get some stitching done. Like I said, you could use your typical little forky thing and kind of work around, uh, work around the edges of this and then saddle stitch it. But I have this thing here and if you've never seen one of these things, it's called a cobbler sewing machine. It's uh, basically a Nin made in the 1900s, like 1905 or something crazy like that technology. Um, you spin the crank. Here, there's a crank on this side you can't really see. Let me kind of pan this over. 
bit of crank there. You've got uh, oops, a bobbin down underneath here. You got your thread and your thread tensioners here. Um, let me get these wound back through there. And then I've got my spool of thread here. Uh, you have like stitching length knob here. And anyway, this is super old school, but I got tired of breaking sewing machines on leather. I keep on sk skipping gears. I even try to, you know, I got that Janome HD 3000 sewing machine, which worked pretty well. But this thing will sew like through a billion layers of leather easily. Like it's nothing for it, which is awesome. I actually did break this one. <laughs> Um, the, the, the base sucks on these things, um, and I tipped it over and I broke this, uh, there's a little rod right here, and I snapped it across here and here, but I know how to TIG weld, and so I TIG welded it back together, um, and it still works now, but it kind of catches and clinks sometimes, so it's not perfect, but it still sews pretty well. Um, they're like, these things are like a hundred and... 10 bucks or something like that. At least when I bought this one, it was like 110 bucks, and it was well worth the 100 bucks for if you're gonna start doing leather stuff. This thing sews really well for what it is. Um, this this walking foot here swivels, so like if I'll sh like when you sew this way and you want to back stitch, you literally just keep the the needle down and keep on going the same way, and it'll stitch back. It's an amazing um, bit of technology from 19 the 1900s, and I love it. So let me show you how this thing works. Um, I'm gonna put a stitch all the way around here, try to make a nice square. Um, it probably won't be perfect. Um, but I'll kind of show you what this thing is all about. Oh, okay. So it just broke the thread. <laughs> so I'll probably edit this out. I pull that out, just re-thread it, but that's annoying. Happens sometimes, but oh well. All right, let's give this another shot. I think what had happened was, is I actually threaded it through this second, there's a secondary tensioner, and I think it was just too much for this thread, because um, it wasn't looped through there, and I was like, oh, I must have just come out. But I think I had that done on purpose, so let's see. Because it's not technically like, um, uh, leather thread it's just heavy duty thread so you can really tension the crap out of this thing I'm trying to get this line back up in the holes that I had already here All right. hear that clank that's the That rod not quite lined up. So it doesn't sound like that when you actually buy it. That's just mine. pretty decent stitch for a hundred dollar sewing machine see how I kind of had a slant in just because there's not a whole lot of room but um, yeah that just makes a life a lot easier especially compared to saddle stitching so I'll stitch up these other ones and we'll go on to the next step which is kind of dunk this in water kind of get it really formed with the hammer and the block and then I'll I'm gonna glue the flap down so we'll have pouch like so. All right, so I've got my little water bucket here. I'm just gonna take my 
Pouches get a little wet, take my little block and then hammer the crap out of them. Just really try to get them to, to uh, seat, I guess. I really don't know what I'm doing, but um, I did this on the first one I made. It seemed to work pretty well. Flick the excess off here. hold this up here see how it's starting to take that shape you know I'm gonna, I'm gonna glue this actually glue the flaps down like I said these aren't gonna be functional pouches um, it is really handy to have functional pouches on a costume <laughs> but when it's like a canon character I really I'm starting to learn if I let something like my 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 ab flap on my den has been like all, going all crazy, so I finally just glued it down flat, um, just so everything's all nice when you take a picture. So I want to glue these down to make sure they're not sitting like this or like this, um, nice and even, picture picture ready. So I'll glue that one down, but that one's more or less ready to. I gotta sand a flap here and here, and then I'll I'll barge it down, and it will be. Looking ready to rock and roll. So I'm gonna do that to the other two. Um, and then we'll get, glue this down and our pouch will be done. As you can see here, I stitched it across here, but did not, remember we didn't glue back here? And that's so you can get the belt through there. And I'm pretty sure this is really similar to how they really made them. I really, I really went in and dug and kind of saw how they were on the belt and whatnot. So anyway. Makes a great looking pouch too, not even if for any Mandalorian or any costume, any any Jedi. That's a great looking pouch. So I'm gonna do these other ones and we'll get these glued and we'll get this video wrapped up. Let's do it. Alright, we're on to our one of the last steps here before we glue it down for the last time here. I got my wood block in here. I've got this stretched over and kind of when you hammered it like so. The uh threads kind of imprint on here kind of see here how it imprints on there I'm gonna try to keep my sanding we're gonna go in and sand this and rough it up um, within the threads here and then above this line so when we go and we glue it down you can't see any glue I've just got some what crit dish dish 80 grit sandpaper and then I'm just going to sand this down all right I'll kind of show you what you're looking for here it's not past this little radius is here it's within the threads so when we go and we glue that down you're not going to see any of the sanded part or um, the glue. So let's go ahead and get these glued up here. All right, do the other ones and we'll come back. When we come back, we'll glue them down. Alright, we got our glue set up here. I'm just going to go ahead and get these glued down. I actually get some polish or something to kind of hit these edges to darken them up, but other than that, look how nice that pouch is. Pretty stoked on how well these came out. <clears throat> Let me get these laced up here. All right, pouches. My uh, one of my buddies, one of my Patreon supporters, hooked me up actually with the the holster and the belt, and he actually made me pouches too. 
Um, but I wanted to uh, figure out a project where I could do from home like this just to get some more content up on my channel. And I also wanted the templates um, for the pouches so I could get those up on my Patreon too because honestly these came out really, really well. So I'm hoping that will drive some people over to my Patreon page. Um, and maybe I'll uh, go ahead and try to figure out how to do the holster too here eventually. Um, but this was just a quick, easy way to get some content out, make a cool, nice pouch that I feel like a lot of you could probably do from home. Um, so yeah, I'm really happy with how that came out. Oh yeah, the blaster, if you're wondering about the blaster. Um, I got this uh, from Wolfger. Wolfger Weapons and Props. They hooked me up with that. And uh, this too. So you can actually, uh, James and all the people over there at Wolf Gear Weapons Props do awesome work. This is 3D printed. It's got some weight to it. It's a beautiful build along with these. And they hooked me up with these um, right before PopCon because I didn't have time to make them myself. And man, I'm glad I did because these things are awesome. So if you want to. I said um, Boba Fett blasters, you can look them up at Wolfger Weapons and Props. These things are awesome. And like I said, Ed Euler III hooked me up with this uh, awesome holster belt assembly. Like I said, he actually, I got the pouches for these two, but I just wanted to get back onto YouTube. It's been a long time, and I've been using all my time at the, the shop to do some other stuff, so I haven't had time to do any builds over there. So I'm like, you know what, I need to figure out a way to get some content up on YouTube, so I'm gonna go after these pouches, which I'm glad I did. I think my templates, um, yeah, are awesome. They work really well, and I'm happy with the size and the shape and that whole process. And I think average Joe Schmo could probably do that. Um, so yeah, that's my build. Maybe I'll get some close-ups of these. Some, you know, take the camera and go across them just so you guys can get some up close, more steady up close. Um, looks at the pouches because I'm really happy with how they came out. So yeah, what's next? I don't know what's next, honestly. I keep on wavering back and forth from some from st uh, from some stuff. But I was thinking today at work, maybe, and you can comment below if you're interested in seeing something like this. But maybe trying to do a full custom Mandalorian build uh, for around five hundred dollars. Um, I know that's a lot of money. Uh, but that's actually a, a budget build when you're getting into cosplay, um, especially cosplay that's approvable and in the, in the um, some people could probably do it cheaper, um, but I'm going to try to, yeah, anyway, that's my idea. Uh, uh, a custom Mando build for $500 or less. Um, anyway, I've been kind of kicking around that idea. The helmet I'd use would be one of these Black Series helmets. Um, so that's like 110 bucks. That's a big chunk of the thing, but um, I wanted to see if I, maybe I could find some stuff from Goodwill and um, do Sintra plates. I could do a build on, instead of doing metal, make them out of what a lot of people are making out of, which is a material called Sintra, um, and use my templates to try to build a budget-friendly custom Mando that should be approvable. I, I mean, that would be the goal. Um, so let me know what you guys think of that. Um, if that's something you'd be interested in seeing a series on that, like a budget-friendly Mando build, let me know. Um, I'm also thinking about doing, uh, and I will be getting, I want, like I said, I want some Django Fett templates for my Patreon page. So I might be doing some of that stuff too. Uh, but yeah, um, it's been a while, sorry. Uh, life gets busy. I got COVID, which sucked. Um, but yeah, I'm on the, on the mend and my whole family's doing well. I'm um, glad to be past that whole ordeal. Um, but yeah, life's been good. I hope it's been good for you. I hope you're all staying healthy and safe. Um, thanks for watching this video. I got more to come hopefully here in the new future. Like I said, I think I'm going to do this uh, pouch before I actually tape the Death Watch helmet um, unboxing before this. But I, I want to get a build video up and then I think I'll do the Death Watch video. And then when I get some pictures, I've got another photo. Or, uh, uh, what they call it, photo shoot um, video, which came out. With some of the photos are phenomenal of Dinjar, and I got video of other shoots that were going on too in those pictures, so it'll be a fun video. And then we'll see where we go from there. 
Um, but yeah, I've got a Patreon page if you want to support my channel. Um, all the templates of all my builds are over there. These templates uh, will be available here once I get them uh, finalized. I'll get those up on Patreon for you guys in, so in case you want to build um, some pouches like this um, for a Bubble Fett build or for any other build really. That's a, a really nice pouch. Um, I'm sure some of you could figure out how to put a, a, a clasp on that too. So yeah. Um, yeah, if you want to support me, that's where you can head over to Patreon. Um, you could like and subscribe to my channel too. I'm trying to do fun content for you guys, but, um, yeah, anyway, uh, yeah. <laughs> my name's Matt Schwartz, and I'm the Weldon Geek. Thanks for watching, guys.